Hi everybody, welcome back to another C++ tutorial. Um, today we're going to be talking about something called polymorphism. Um, sort of an introduction and then we'll talk a little bit more about it in the next video. Um, before I get started too much, I wanted to make sure to thank all of you for uh, getting my channel up to a thousand subscribers. That's a really big accomplishment for me and I it was always kind of a goal, so thank you everybody. I also apologize for not putting out videos uh, for a while, but now that school's over, I can uh, put out videos a little bit more regularly, so that's nice. So polymorphism is sort of the next step after inheritance. Uh, it's sort of what you can do with inheritance beyond just saving yourself having to type out uh, y you know, stuff over and over and over again because now you have s some actual functionality going on. So first I'm just going to sort of make some abstract classes and I don't actually mean that but like an abstract example where uh, you know we're just having a class A and a class B just to demonstrate the concept and then I'll do a more robust practical example. Uh, but so so all it is, let's go ahead and make another one. Suppose we have uh, a parent class A and a couple more classes or you know any number of classes that inherit from that class. Uh, what polymorphism lets us do is we can use a parent pointer, a, a pointer of the parent class, so that's an A pointer, um, to point to an instance of any of the child of the child classes. So let's go ahead and make a B instance, okay? And then we'll have an A pointer, call it A point B, uh, set that equal to the address of our instance of class B. So right, this is this is new. Normally, with a pointer, you know, an integer pointer only points to an integer. A uh, character pointer points to char uh, a character or an array of characters, but um, you're not used to seeing one type of pointer point to a different, an entirely different data type. And so it doesn't usually work. It only works because of the inheritance relationship that we've set up here. And so that's what polymorphism is. Um, and so that's the basic concept, but from there, there's actually a lot that you can do and then in the next video you'll see that there's even more uh, that you can do. Uh, did I forget a semicolon? Yep. I'm just compiling this to show you that I'm not lying about this. Yeah, no, it's not going to output anything uh, because there's, you know, there's no C outs. But this just shows that we don't get a compile error and that yes, this is valid. And so the neat thing about this is uh, well, it I don't know if this is necessarily neat. It's important to remember. When you have an A pointer, it's still an A pointer. So suppose that in class B, we had some method called do something. But that's only in class B, right? It's not in our A class. We can't use the A point B pointer, the A pointer, um, to execute that method because A point B is an A pointer, right? So the idea is we could also have an A pointer that points to class C, and class C isn't going to have the do something method, right? So does that make sense? Because this is an A pointer. It's not a B pointer. It's not even a B class, okay? It's just pointing to a B class, but theoretically it doesn't even know that it's pointing to a B class. So uh, you'll see we'll get a compiler error here because this is an A pointer. So even though it's pointing to a B object, don't think of it as like a B object because it's still an A pointer. And uh, I'm not going to write it out, but you could also have an A pointer point to C because that also is inheriting from A. Okay, enough of the abstract example. I'm going to go ahead and do something a little bit more fun, I guess, building on what we did in the last video. This time, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, our weapons a name, member, and uh, 
That way when we output them later, it'll be a little bit nicer. Um, by the way, the, the reason that I'm using a constant string reference uh, as opposed to, you know, just a string, I mean right here, const string reference, uh, is because a string is a large object, right? It takes up a lot of, like, memory, a lot of bytes. Um, so by using a reference, references don't take up any room. They're sort of like pointers, except even better, because they don't take up any room. So that way, we it's a little bit more efficient. Okay, so we'll have a sword that inherits from the method. I'm sorry, inherits from the weapon class. I'll go ahead and give it the sharpness thing, even though I'm not gonna, uh, you know, fully flesh that out the way I sort of did in the last video. This is sort of just to demonstrate that sword is not the same as as weapon. It does have its own things. Also, you'll notice I'm having to initialize weapon. We learned how to do that in the last video when you have a child class and you're uh, initializing the parent class. Oops, almost forgot a semicolon. Finally, I'll have like a magic attack. Um, this is sort of just another example of something that might inherit from the weapon class and this might have like an MP cost thing, right? That's the kind of thing a sword wouldn't have, but a magic attack does. Almost there. MP, sorry, MP cost. Okay, I think that's it. So, okay, you see how we have our sword class and our magic attack class, and they're both inheriting from weapon. So, right, this is not that different from when we just had A, B, and C. Okay, now it's just a little bit more fleshed out with some members and that sort of thing. Alright, so check this out. We can... I'm gonna... I kind of meant to show this with the earlier example, but one of the ways that people usually handle polymorphism is instead of go ahead and making a sword, okay, and then having a weapon pointer be the address of the sword, it's it's a little bit cleaner and just a little bit better to just use dynamic memory allocation because then you do it all in one line. You just have to remember to delete uh, your dynamic memory afterward. If you don't know what dynamic memory allocation is, I made a video on it a long time ago, so you can go check that out. Um, but basically we just say weapon pointer, um, I'll call it, W sword for weapon sword equals new sword. Now, why did you autocorrect that text edit? Okay, I'll call it good old red sword. Give it an attack, a sharpness. I don't know. These don't really matter, right? They're just, uh, I mean, they would matter if I had them implemented, but mostly it's just for demonstration. Right, so this is, this is kind of neat. We're having a weapon pointer point to a sword object. Okay, let's make sure we remember to delete that pointer afterward. And I'll make a another one, this time a magic attack. Dang, that is annoying. I wish it wouldn't go ahead and auto-correct my stuff. Let's see, we'll call it lightning bolt. Um, maybe this can have like a really high attack, but also a high MP cost or something, right? This, these would only really make sense if I had context for them, but I don't, but it's okay. And then we gotta remember to delete that as well. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make an array of weapon pointers, right? So we haven't been over this before, but in the same way that we would have an array of integers, uh, it's just an array of weapon pointers. It's not an array of weapons, it's an array of weapon pointers, okay? Don't overcomplicate it. I mean, a weapon pointer is just a type of data. It just points to a weapon. The same way that an integer is just a type of data. So you can have an array of weapon pointers the same way you can have an array of integers or anything else. Um, so I'll just call this weapons, I suppose. It should be two, two elements. It could be more, um, but it's not. And I suppose I might have 
I maybe could have done all this in one line, but this way it's a little bit cleaner and I wouldn't have to stretch the window quite as far. Uh, but the reason that I'm doing this is to sort of show what you can do uh, when you have when you're using polymorphism in this way. We have a sword and a magic attack that are both contained in the same array, right? So that's that's a weird concept. You wouldn't expect to have you know one data type and a different data type contained in the same array because usually arrays are restricted to just one data type and we're not violating that rule the array is still restricted to just weapon pointers it's just the weapon pointers because of the way we've set up our inheritance the weapon pointers can point to a sword or a magic attack so that's kind of neat I think so what's cool about this is now we can just treat our weapons as weapons. We don't have to treat them as a sword. We don't have to treat it as a magic attack. We can just use it as a weapon, not even knowing if it's a sword or if it's a magic attack, and sort of letting the program figure that out for us. We're just treating them uh, each as individual weapons. So check this out. I'm going to call uh, from the weapons array. I'm going to do get name, so we have our name in there, and then just output the attack, because these are both, uh, you know, did I actually write these in? I don't think I did. Sorry about that. Um, so I'll go ahead and make these uh, methods, and so the important thing is that these are in uh, the weapon class. They're not in the sword class, they're not in the magic attack class, but we can use them, right, because we're using an inheritance. And because there's a weapon pointer. So a weapon pointer can do anything like a weapon can do. You just use the little arrow operator. Okay, so we're going to get the name, and then we're going to get the attack. So suppose you were just uh, maybe going to output all of the attack levels of your weapons, uh, or you wanted to sort them by attack level, okay, it doesn't really, you, you don't want to sort them based on whether it's a sword or whether it's a magic attack, you just want to group all of your weapons together and sort them by attack. That's something you can sort of utilize polymorphism to do when you just want to treat it all as a weapon rather than treating, you know, the sword as a sword and the magic attack as a magic attack. You want to just have it all be uh, in the weapons ar array, or this could be like inventory, or you know anything you want. All right, I think that's all. Let's go ahead and see if we can compile this. Hopefully, sword, huh? Uh oh, you know, I bet it did that autocorrect thing again. That's really annoying. Well, nice that that was the only error. So check it out. Now we have it outputs the attack of red sword. Um, and it outputs the attack of lightning bolt. So that's pretty much polymorphism. The, the basic concept is when you have a parent class point to a child class, and then you can treat the child class as a member of the parent class um, rather than treating it individually as a child class. And this is cool because it lets you group together uh, children uh, from the same parent, and then you can sort of work with them in groups and uh, so that's pretty useful. In the next video we're going to be talking about something called virtual functions which lets you basically have a function in your parent class that then is altered in the individual children class but we'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, this was just the basic concept of polymorphism. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.